Hey, what is up guys? Marcy here back to do another video and today I've got a game on tournament decision, no poker. And we're playing as the Zocom, if I recall correctly, and my opponent in this match will be playing as the Scrin faction. So this game, I remember it for being very close. <laughs> very close indeed and you will see as this game goes on i do like this map it is a classic i mean there's nostalgia written all over this map but there has been some modifications to it over the years if you guys remember kane's draft from 15 years ago you will have probably noticed by now that the spikes are in a different location that's to prevent them from being uh, harassed by shadow teams early on usually what happens is not players go for shadow team rushes they send them straight to the enemy spikes and they're able to cut off the engineer before the engineer captures them and that is a big deal in competitive matches does not matter anymore because we fixed that problem plus in the middle of the map i made a small modification to stop engineers from dancing around that middle area that middle section instead of capturing the defensive tower which is highly infuriating let's just say in fact the majority for of the fixes that i have implemented and found over the past two years were because i got really infuriated and i've had the motivation to try and fix them when it directly affects you and you have some baseline knowledge of how to fix stuff then you're extra motivated to try and do it and i'm happy with the fixes i have found over the years i'm going to try and fix more things but as of now my goal is to try and get more players playing and to keep this patch and game going so i'm going to dedicate my free time to doing more of these types of videos and hope you guys learn something from them as well it would be nice to see you all online even if it, you don't have much game experience there's going to be someone near your level to practice against and if you're not comfortable with that just play versus the ai until you get a basic grasp of what's going on but you can see like all games i post on my channel there's a lot of harvesters it's not one harvest one refining like i see a lot of players do just follow the build orders that i use like this one here with ecoing up and you should be good to go you don't need to copy these fancy schmancy builds that i do at the start of the game with bloodhounds and shadow teams and disintegrator rushes no just just play regular eco games like this one here learn how to macro if you didn't know macro is a term for ecoing up and building up your economy and production and you'll probably win almost all your games doing this of course, you will need to scout your opponent to see what he's up to at all times. You can't just make seven harvesters and not scout your opponent because what if he has a flame tank? So you're going to know when to scout and that is uh, a skill that you gain by playing. Experience counts there, but generally speaking, eco is the way to go if you are a new player. Anyways, I'm going for APCs here. Now, I did have a glass of wine or two before playing this game so some of the decision making might not be the best but so far i'm content with my play i'm doing very well here with these apcs i'm also doing a pretty decent build order as well i'm going for the strato fighter hawks with two mcvs this is very powerful strategy researching that ap ammo upgrade as well which is fundamental for gdi factions to hold Aggression such as this seekers pretty vulnerable to the damage type of the AP ammo, which is gun damage That is a particular type of damage inflicted in this game. There's several types of damages You've got a grenade gun cannon sniper and the last one is rocket Speaking of rocket, I've got several of these APCs garrisoned up with those rockets one thing I will mention and I think it's a good time to mention is I would love to fix the reverse move bug I had an idea on how to do it but I was missing one piece the last piece of the puzzle I could not work out and that is how to create a delay before executing a function in the scripting language that this game uses 
but I saw in the modding forums recently that it is indeed possible to do that, so I don't know, maybe there is a slim chance that we can get reverse bugs fixed. It would be nice. In fact, I'd be over the moon, guys. I'm surprised it has not been a priority of those who know more than me in modding to, you know, fix reverse bugs. You'd, you'd think that that would be the goal, right? But maybe not. I understand modders have a different perspective on things. They prefer to be more creative rather than bug fixers. So I've got the ceramic armor upgrade as well as the stratifier boosters. I'm going to just get out of there without taking any damage. Took out the tier 3. No hex pod will be on the way. And I am pretty safe in the bottom so far. My opponent is trial 59. Working on those firehawks 8 will be the amount of firehawks I will have. Now this is very very hard for Scrin to stop. Could have gone for 8 but you know what guys 7 is enough. And with proper group micro I can go on a very damaging bombing run. I can destroy multiple power plants. I can destroy the warp chasm which I'm going to go for. As well as the tier 2. Try and stop the technology assembler which is the Scrin tier 3 from being built. Remember he lost it not long ago so me destroying this tier 2 makes the most sense at this time because that will cancel his tier 3. Anyways, I'm going for a Marv now. I'm going to try and squeeze a Marv out. I am low on tip however. Despite this wins I have been taken. I am running dry out of time room. I have not yet placed a refinery down on my expansion. Also, Shock Trooper starting to come out. I need to try and do something about that. I could bomb his tier spike. I know a lot of you guys in the comment section uh, talk about me not bombing Tiberian spikes often enough, and I completely agree. That is $600 per minute, which is as much as a single power plant. But these power plants are pretty valuable for him since they are upgraded. They cost in total a thousand resources. And those forks are just flying overhead. I'm going to return those to base. I finally set up an expansion rev. And I've got the Marv on its way here. Two hammerheads, pretty low on health. I built those to kill those descents in the top of the map and also as well to keep that location scouted in case he's going to move his um, drone ship there which is highly likely so the mcv will be making its way to the expansion relatively soon my marv will be coming out and it's very difficult for screen factions to stop hawks he could have gone for the emp spike those do destroy aircraft but not whilst they are docked on the airfield that would be silly if they could do that Shock Trooper is very, very good for killing Firehawks. I'm going to actually be forced to pull back here. Those Shocks are definitely the counter and the answer in this moment of time. I'm bringing in resources. So is he. He's keeping himself going with that I call see some tripods and gun walkers as well at that field. But I just don't have any response yet to the tripods. I'm going for one hammerhead, but that's not enough. I need to consider my options here as Zocom. I got the second MCV, he's squeezing out some cultists now. Those defensive towers have been captured in the middle. And I'm now afraid he's gonna take the middle, the top field with a drone ship. We're gonna see if that's the case or not. And I deem it's the right time to destroy the tip spike. He's been getting resources with that over time. And, and since his base is now littered with that shard AA, it is not required. Uh, to go in there and just lose all my hawks. That'd be silly. I've got triple rifles in my mouth. Now, this is pretty uncommon, or it was uncommon. It was buffed significantly in recent updates. The range was increased by, I think, 20% or 30%. The DPS remains the same, but they don't get AP ammo when that upgrade is researched. I deemed it would maybe compete a bit too much with the sniper team hard point didn't want a 300 dollars garrison that's anti-infantry to make the 1000 dollars garrison 
worse, nor did I want to make snipers better, because then the Mars would counter one of their only sh uh, weaknesses, which is infantry spam. And these shocks are just causing problems to me. I, I'm unable to get into this screen player's base. Now, one saving grace to me is he does not have an eradicator hex bot. I am bringing in resources and I'm spamming hammerheads, which is a solid strategy as a Zocon player. I've got eight of them. I'm continuing to produce the hammerheads. Those will be coming out. And since I have simply too many hammerheads here, I have the force multiplier. Despite the gunwalkers naturally countering hammerheads, I'm going to be able to kill the gunwalkers without a problem. And if your opponent isn't micro, you can even use firehawks to bait in bait some shots from the guns. Now, there I lost maybe two or three hammerheads, but cleaned up a total of 10 gunwalkers, which was well worth it, if you ask me. I cleaned up that force. None of the gunwalkers are there to threaten me any further. Plus, these flame tank, these, sorry, flame tanks, these hammerheads are like flying flame tanks. So if I get a bunch of them out, I'm going to be able to go into this screen player's base and even with the soul shard turrets he has, destroy them without any problem. Marv now being pursued by these shock troopers. It's amazing just how much he has produced from one field. He's long leeching Tib in the top, something I have failed to answer just yet. But I'm going to head up there now with these hammerheads and look to take out anything that I see. One of the harvesters, as I suspected, he is there taking the Tiberium from me. And this Marv is slowly picking away at this structure. I'm going to just remove the last re resources he has. He can sure put down a growth accelerator, but I do control three fields and the reality is he only controls one and soon his spikes will be under threat as well. One of them did get taken out. See a mecha there dead, upgraded with a disc segment. So it's going to be very strong. This aircraft takes out two of my hammerheads. Three of my hammers goes down, so that mecha P definitely paid off. I've thrown down three sonic emitters just to try and deter those shock troopers that he has. But I am... It's it's questionable if the hammerheads are the right choice. He seems to have found the resources to stop them. He's moving his MCB to the top of the map. 14 hammerheads. You can see that new icon for the targeted drop off icon the control a by default icon you can see that cursor on there that's just to, dis to, dis to distinguish the two abilities from each other and hammerheads man even though there's a mechapede there i feel like i have the opportunity to go in and i have to go in because he's going to use that mcb to drop a shard turret any second and these hammerheads won't enjoy seeing that. Though I can take them out if he does do it. If he's got more than one turret, obviously this, the losses will be uh, unsustainable for me. But I decide to pull back. I take out two tripods, the Megapede and the Shock Troopers. Hammerheads take minimal losses, but at this point, the Eradicator comes out. He has an expansion. And my Marv is taking a lot of damage. So yeah, this is a big problem for me. Even the... Uh, temporal wormhole comes down. I got a lot of hammerheads to my name, but that is my army, just a bunch of hammerheads. Now, one saving grace is I do have a wall of sonic emitters at my expansion field, but it's not going to defend an area of high value anymore because there's just not much Tiberium there to secure. So, me. Defending that location doesn't have much uh, importance. These shard turrets, though, causing so much damage. Hammerheads may not be the best answer, but it is what I have currently, and I'm going to start to focus on the harvesters. MCV does go down for him, but he does have still a gravity stabilizer, so he can still rebuild his drone ship. And that Eradicator is still alive. So I, I don't really have anything to kill the Eradicator with. These Hammerheads are not going to be able to deal with it since he has 
uh, shocks inside of there. You're going to get the EMP grenade upgrade. It's a quick and easy way to counter epic units. And now for those hammerheads falls. That's with the nerfed shard damage, by the way. Those are a lot weaker now than they used to be many years ago. And I'm in a bit of a dire predicament because I don't have any eco left. He's also taken my tip spike. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking rather than me capturing that back and potentially losing an engineer to a buzzer swarm, I'd rather just take it out here and now. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got one firehawk left and a bunch of hammerheads. I've rebuilt a harvester or two. Maybe I lost a couple before. But I don't know what I can do from this position. I have two MCVs, but it's... I actually lost that for a second MCV, but... I've only got one left, and if I push that to the top and he moves his Eradicator up there, I'm not going to be able to kill it. I'm now versus an Eradicator Hexapod with no way to defend against it. Another drone platform makes it to the top of the map. Devastator Warship working on my base, but I do get a pretty good win here, killing that drone platform off. But every time I do, he's tr I'm trading hammerheads. So e even though I killed it, I lost like three or four hammerheads in the process. That's cost effective for the sprint. He can just rebuild another drone platform. And that Eradicator is getting healed up in the back there by some corruptors. These refineries are going down to the Devastator. I've got nothing in those hammerheads to counter it. But I do have a Firehawk on standby. I can change that to the double A loadout and deal with this dev ship. All well, those hammerheads are pretty low on health. I should return those to base, get some free repairs. I can also build combat support airfields, which are way better nowadays. They have as much health as a regular airfield. Plus, they spawn with three drones like regular airfields instead of two. They no longer desync the game, which was what happened in the vanilla version. And plus, they have a cool spinning radar, which was bugged in vanilla. So everything about it has been fixed, and it is a viable structure to build. Plus, you get a, a rifleman squad for selling them off, so that's just added incentive. You're not losing anything because you get that squad afterwards. Moving some infantry into his base because I, I just don't have anything else. I don't have anything else. Hammerheads. They're good, but uh, they just aren't the unit I need. I'm, I've got them, and they're very easy to sacrifice, especially versus Scrint. Against Nod, you can maybe get more mileage at this point. But uh, yeah, those Shard AA turrets, man, once he's got more than one set up, I just cannot go there. At most, I can camp this green field and stop him from taking that field, but this is practically a a no limits uh, location this is a different combo I haven't tried this before this is the first time I've ever tried to do this but I'm gonna go ahead and EMP the shard turrets and kill them with the hammerheads use EMP to shut down the turrets while the hammerheads do the DPS but with that uh, drone platform I don't think I'm going to be able to deal with this. Uh, this shard turret is taking a long time to go down. I lose the majority of my hammerheads in the process. That has severely limited my hammerhead count. And now Senna is in a very good position. His hexapod got a ton of resources from those dead units of mine falling. I'm bringing in some tip. Thankfully, a lot of it has regrown. So I can transfer some harvests to them. You have to rebuild one or two more since the fields are growing back. This hex has promoted two veterans, so it has done a lot of damage. It's paid off for itself three times over. He's not having any difficulty with Tib either. He's got Tib regrowing on his field. Plus, he's going to soon set up a refinery on his expansion. Shock Trooper to scout. I'm going to kill that off. There is always the risk of being wormholed, especially by Trail of 59. Cooldown is faster, though it's not quite as abusive as it once was. 
Before it was 120 seconds, that was half the cooldown of the screen wormhole, that was crazy. Everyone abused that. That was reduced to 180 seconds. I say reduced, but it's, uh, you know what I mean. It's take, it takes longer to use it twice. So the hammerheads, they failed. The firehawks, I have none left. So what is my next option? Well, I'm gonna try zone raider spam. I'm gonna go for zone raiders with grenadiers. There is the risk of being hit by mind control, but if I combo this with snipers, I can kill the prodigy. So the hexbot is coming in. He's gonna pull that back. And my micro has to be perfect. He does scout the imp transition. So he's going to be able to respond to this now with cultists, with devastators, and gunwalkers. Plus that hexapod is going to be a problem. But the drone platform does move in. Those zone raiders dealing tons of damage to it with their shoulder-mounted rockets and even the drone ship taking damage whilst deploying. It is technically in a vehicle state whilst deploying. And now we see the corruptors working on the zone raiders and some of those dead zone raiders of mine spawned viceroids which turned against my own units buzzer swarm comes in that was a very very good buzzer swarm look at the zone raiders going down i lose all but one squad or two squads of zones and the buzzer promotes to heroic so that is not so great for me senna is gonna be enjoying a nice amount of resources through that recycler system on the hex and he has very much found himself back into this game hexpod will make it back out alive i need to try and deal with that hexpod because if it goes back to base and heals it's gonna be a disaster for me so i decide this time i'm gonna move my mcv with this attack maybe deploy an armory on the front line to replenish the lost squad members in my zone raiders but this is pretty much what i have and that's all i'm gonna be getting i do have firehawks i built two because i was afraid of zone i'm um, sorry devastator warships which is one of the only real counters to mass imp spam like this but you don't want to go for a pure imp because your opponent has various ways of stopping this especially trying to die with the uh, temporal wormhole they can use that and deal massive damage. But I'm doing my best here in targeting everything that isn't the Hex. The Hex is just going to be tanking damage whilst the Gunwalkers kill my infantry. And even those Corruptors can work on my Inf. But uh, understandably, he's going to heal his Hexpod up. He doesn't want that to die. I've got a Commando back there, but that's going to be of limited use. Those Visceroids spawning, doing loads of damage to me. Look at them go. They are being a nuisance, both... His units and mine will target them. And they have a high chance of spawning. It's a little lower than it is in Tip Wars. But nevertheless, it is a threat. And now what do I do against all these gunwalkers? There's 10 gunwalkers there and I only have two zone raiders. I no longer have an MCV. So these two bags is basically all I have left. And I have no way to rebuild my industry i can't go back for uh, vehicles i can only build aircraft and infantry at this point but i have all my tech i've still got a commando i still maintain control of an armory so i can put my commando in the armory and get some heals on it if necessary i can also replenish the lost squad members in these uh, zone raiders but yeah the emps are coming down those emp squads very effective hexapod there just getting so much work done with its uh, plasma discs as well as its recycler system keeping the screen player's economy going and here i was in such a desperate situation so i decided to ultimately sell this uh, armory off i've got a refinery at my expansion but it's not bringing in much resources soon i'm going to get two or three full loads of green tip and this is going to be a very tricky situation for me. I'm dealing with a full health for Hexapod and a scrim player who probably has a Buzzer Swarm ready to go once again. But this time, I'm a little bit more prepared to face the Buzzer Swarm support power because I've got a Commando mixed in with this army. 
I'm focusing on the Corruptors there. Any win I can take, I will go for. And I'm not going to give up. I could have easily called it quits a while ago. But I'm going to continue fighting on. This Hexpod still causing major damage. And this, what you see on the screen, is all I have left. There's a Buzzer Storm coming in. And unfortunately, I lost a bunch of zones. But that time, the Commando came in clutch. Killed the Buzzers. And what do I do now against this Eradicator Hexapod? I'm actually out of Grenadiers. There's no more EMP. So once this Hex comes out of the EMP, what am I going to do against it? I'm in a dire predicament now. These zone raiders are falling. Even though they have power packs, the Hexapod is elite. It's going to be doing a ton of damage even to these armored zone raiders plus the gun walkers are firing at my zones from the back that is a, an elite hex it has a real chance of going heroic guys and now i find myself in a position where i'm against a, an elite eradicator hexapod with only two bags left and i could not believe what was happening even a heroic buzzer back there as well but i got a commando so that's not gonna kill me hexapod making it back to base for repairs now he does have a wart sphere he has tech as well so how am i going to deal with this hex if that gets back to base alive i'm going to be screwed but fortunately i do have one grenadier squad and i was just about able to land that gunwalkers and buzzers reinforcing to this location commando t doing its job killing the buzzers and the hexapod just about falls there to the few zone raiders and grenadiers I have left over. No resources pretty much for me and now there's two corruptors to contend with. Three corruptors and a couple of visceroids spawn once again. Look at that visceroid damage coming down on my zone raiders. And this small group of GDI forces is going to prevail where the hammer heads and where the marv and two mcvs failed so the least sought after units were the game changers in this particular match anyways guys hope you all enjoyed this one on tournament decision no poker a gdi based game versus screen and before i go i'd like to thank my patreon members for supporting me and my channel keeping this game going and yeah, guys, I appreciate you all being around and watching these games. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.